Hello, is it, uh, it's JFM, is it Jose? Sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Anyway, um, I, I wanted to comment on uh, your uh, Emerald City recap. Um, you were talking about going to, you know, maybe like, I think you said Dark Horse and talking to the editors about your work and, you know, they didn't give you a, a great review, um, which, you know, is is something to expect at any convention, and I hope that won't deter you from going to other conventions. Um, I'm not too sure where you're located. You, you went all the way to Washington, Emerald City. Um, if you ever get a chance, you know, get some money, go to San Diego, um, even, you know, Wisconsin, Chicago. Try some other conventions. Even try, like, the smaller conventions. And, uh, you know, don't, don't let this deter you from going to conventions and submitting your work. Um, you also mentioned something about... Um, you're definitely going to do your work as a webcomic, which is a great start. That's a great start. Um, but I, I would say, you know, if you've got full stories, because it's this is really hard. To tell you the truth, this is really hard because um, you know you you put your work on YouTube and but it's really hard to see your work on YouTube because it's not the best res. Um, I don't know if you have any other um, accounts anywhere, but you know, try getting maybe like a Flickr account or a DeviantArt account so you can post like entire pages um, because it would be nice to see you know as 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 people are subscribed to your work or even like uh, friends that you know or family or people you know at school it's always good to have something online that people can see that's you know sequential art um, the other deterrent you were talking about was um, you know you have artists who, who like your work and then the editors don't you're a little bit right on on the aspect of, you know, editors are looking for marketability. Um, that's what they're looking at. They're looking at, okay, is this something that we can sell to an audience? Does an audience want to read this? Does an audience want to pick this up? Will they drop down their hard-earned money for this story? What makes it special? That's the other thing. You need to sell your work. What makes Jeff and Taylor special? Why, does, why do you want people to see it? What makes it worthwhile to have in their hands, to look at, to touch, to feel. What, what's that, that enduring quality that, that, that sells your work? Sell your work. Be, be, on top of being a creator, you also have to be a salesman. You have to sell yourself. That's what artists do. You sell ourselves constantly. There are, okay, there are two kind of comic book artists out there. There are, actually, there are two kind of artists out there, okay? There are artists that make work for the sake of making it because they enjoy doing it. And then there are people that this is their job. This is how they survive. They make work so people will buy it. It's it's a commercial thing. But they also make work because they enjoy it as well. So it's kind of it's kind of a half and half thing. Looking at your work, this is my perspective now. This is my critique of your work from what I've seen. Honestly, as I said before, I'd like to see a sequential story, you know, one page to another page to another page to see how well you tell a story. But my critique of your art, as an artist myself, I can't, you know, I can't critique you on, on your storylines, uh, on your character development or anything like that. But I can, I think I can critique you on your art. For me, as an artist looking at your work, the 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 drawback that I have is that to me your art looks very flat. In order to get a get get away from that that flatness, try varying your lines. Um, by using a different pen. Now, in your work, black and white color, one or the two has to make it pop from the page. Either your inking has to make it pop, or your coloring has to make you pop. Now, you seem to be pretty um, set on on the uh, the single line drawing, but I, I would try, I'd say experiment. Okay, experiment with your line, your inking. Try using different um, different kind of pens. Now this, and this pen right here, this is called a brush pen. And this is made by, um, I don't know if you can see that, it's that uh, Faber-Castell. This is kind of like if, um, back in the old days, um, cartoonists would um, ink their stuff with a brush, a painting brush, or um, an inking nib. Now this is a self-inking nib, this has a cartridge in it you know, an ink cartridge in it, and you can buy these. This is the fountain pen, actually. That's what this is called. But this is, like, this is a calligraphy pen, basically. That's what this is. This is a calligraphy pen. Um, go out and buy 
or you can get a self-inking. Those are a little bit harder, and it's, you know, you have to worry about spilling. That's why, I, you know, a lot of artists, especially like Sergio Argonos, who does Mad Magazine and Grill, he uses a fountain pen for his inking, but he uses a fountain pen. He doesn't use um, a pen that looks like this, which is uh, gives you a very flat line. You know, like this edge here. This this gives you a very flat line. This is like a repetitive, or, or a, not repetitive, a pitiograph pen. That's what this is. This is kind of like a pitiograph pen. I'm assuming that's what you use for your work. I'm um, just looking at it. Try using, um, try getting other pens and testing out your work. It takes a while to get used to, you know, cha especially changing your style. Here's another pen I would also recommend. This is a Tombow. Basically what this is, is one end is, um, kind of like a straight line end, and then the other end is like a, a, a su what they call a sumo brush or Japanese brush, and this gives you a brush feeling as well. Try doing that to vary your inking, so it gives, a, gives your characters a little more definition and not as flat looking. Experiment. Try doing that. The other thing is, is that, as I said before, if you're really, really set on that, that flat kind of inking, then your colors have to pop out. They have one or the other has to help bring your work out of the page. It has to make it pop. Um, those are other those are recommendations I can say or give you to you to to try to vary your work. I think that's I think that might be the, the trend that the editors are looking at. Try experimenting. Try pushing your work beyond what you're doing. Get out of your comfort zone and try doing something that you wouldn't even think about before. The other thing too is study cartoonists like crazy. I mean seriously, all different cartoonists, even cartoonists you don't really like. Look at their work. Look at indie comics, indie comic creators, and look at their stuff and see what are they doing that's making a big deal. Why is it so important? Why is why why are people so drawn to their work? Why why is it important for them? You know, why are they out there? How are they getting published? Look at their work. See what, what are they doing? that that is appealing what are they doing that's not appealing you've got to find your own i guess your own way but your style is too simplified. you've got to make it your own you've got to push it beyond and and make it look dynamic don't make it look like everybody else's work make it look like your work put your personality into it and and i think that will definitely help sell your work Try the web comics. Get people to respond to your work. Get it out there. Videos aren't aren't the best. Do full pictures out there. Do the web comic. You've got a lot of free websites that are out there to your advantage. Take a hold of them. You got if you got a Facebook account, put your work on there for your friends to look at. MySpace, whatever. Put your work out for people to see. Have an online portfolio, something that people can critique on. Critiquing is probably the hardest thing to accept as an artist. When I went to school, I had a hard time dealing with critiques because a lot of the things that people were saying didn't really make much sense to me at first. And then after a while, I started seeing what they're seeing. And then it helped me think, okay, I, I'm doing something that's very generalized. They're, they're, they're seeing something that I'm not seeing. It's best. It's always good to have someone else's opinion, but have a lot of other people's opinion. People who don't know you to give you that critique. Push your limits though. Get out of your comfort zone and take a chance.